Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Master Paul, and I'm very grateful to be connecting with you today here on live stream. I'm coming at you through Zoom into Facebook, so I'm really not sure actually just how well it's working. It appears to be okay now. Uh, I'm still kind of checking in on it, so I'm looking forward to uh, some confirmation on that. Give me a moment. And bear with me as I connect to my own. Bear with me. Okay, so I have confirmation. Very good. Thank you so much for your patience. All right, so welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me. <clears throat> um, today I'm going to be focusing on a really important subject matter that a lot of people need a deeper understanding of. And it is called Understanding the Nature of Shen, Qi, and Jing, and its association to your health and happiness. It is truly an important subject that needs to be understood. <clears throat> and honestly, it should be taught in universities. It should be taught uh, from, uh, to all the doctors and to all of the uh, various uh, healing institutions from psychology all the way down to, uh, to the dentist. There's not a single area of life <clears throat> that should not be impacted by this wisdom. So I'm, I come in through the Zoom um, platform today so that I can share with you a few slides that will help you to have a better understanding of what is Shen, Qi, and Jing. And it's direct association to your health and wellness, health and happiness. So I look forward to sharing that with you. I apologize about the little hiccup there and getting live. <clears throat> but it should, um, should be good after we get going here. So thank you, uh, Michelle, for joining. Thank you, Joy Weber. Aloha to Rosetta. Welcome also to Jennifer. Thank you for joining. Thank you all for hitting the share button. Welcome, Lisa Zarniak. Aloha and welcome, Kristen. And, and uh, thank you for assisting me, Kristen. Uh, thank you and welcome also to Bettina and uh, Shaz. Now, welcome also, Jennifer Kress Smith. And so as Facebook is going out and getting a few more people, I'll share with you that um, on Tuesdays, I do practice sessions with uh, my students. I have uh, somewhere between 20 and 80 students, depending on how uh, active they are. <clears throat> and every Tuesday, I do a practice session for them. And this Tuesday, I focused uh, actually on uh, the Da I calligraphy. And I will touch on that just a smidgen through this Shen Qi and Jing wisdom and teachings today because um, it's something that it would be a value for everybody to understand a bit more of. How is it that a Tao calligraphy can benefit my health and my wellness? Well, hopefully after this explanation today, you'll have a far greater understanding of the nature, power, and significance of it. So many people have heard the wisdom uh, that Master Shah has brought to humanity that everyone and everything has a soul. <clears throat> and I want to add to that, that not only does everyone and everything has a soul, but everyone and everything has Shen, Qi, and Jing. And that will make a lot more sense as you uh, hear today's wisdom and teachings. Of course, I give credit to my teacher, Dr. Master Shah. He's the one who's written over 21 books, 11 of them New York Times bestsellers, four of which are number one New York Times bestsellers. And so... Uh, to say the least, he is well-respected and well-read to have that many uh, New York Times bestsellers. But at the same time, give me a moment to turn off my ding-ding. Okay. <clears throat> but at the same time, it's important to... I have to turn off all these ding-making noises while I'm communicating with you or it interrupts me. I apologize. Um, when we are working with the deeper understandings that Master Shah has brought to humanity, sometimes we need to be able to apply it in real life. And that's what I hope I do for you in these live streams, is I give you the wisdom that he has brought and introduce it into how do we implement it in our lives in a practical and healthy way, as will be in today's wisdom. Uh, welcome also to uh, Lorianne, welcome Suzanne Ecker, welcome Pamela, and welcome Alicia Jade Kwan. Thank you for coming. Thank you for clicking on the share button. 
So while Facebook is gathering more souls, I'm going to go ahead and connect this heart to heart, soul to soul. <clears throat> and we'll do that by placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, which is just like a prayer position. We're going to drop the left hand in front of the heart center and the right hand gently remains pointed towards heaven. And then as part of the process of aligning our Shen Qi and Jing, I will share with you and call forth the beings of light. Dear our beloved divine creator, God, Tao, Source, by whatever name you go on, we love you, we honor you, appreciate you, and we invite you to please be present at this time. We cannot thank you enough for your unconditional love, service, and blessings to each and every one of us. So much you do for us that we do not see. So much we are not grateful for. We apologize and ask forgiveness. We ask your presence today to offer your guidance, blessings, and assistance with this teaching and this wisdom. We invite all the beings of light, including the angels, the healing angels, the archangels, masters, ascended masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas. <clears throat> we invite all of you to please come. We invite the souls of those serving the planet of the light side, including Mother Earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, planets, galaxies, and universes. Beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, beloved Buddha, Kuan Yin, Krishna, Muhammad, and more. We ask that all of you offer your blessings for today's wisdom teachings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony. We love you, Ani, we appreciate you. Invite you to please come. <clears throat> and as we chant one round of love, peace, and harmony, we ask that all souls connect heart to heart, soul to soul. And we invite all souls to chat with us this one round. For those that are new who this video ends up on your page, in a group or whatnot, the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony is a mantra. It's been translated in over 40 languages. It's chanted daily, literally, in six continents around the world. And I encourage you to learn more by going to lovepeaceharmony.org. So let us chant one round to connect. Lu la lu la li, lu la lu la la li, lu la lu la li lu la, lu la li lu la, lu la li lu la, wo ai wo xian er ling. Wo ai zhan nan li, rang ling rong, er mu shi sheng, sheng ai ping an he xie, sheng ai ping an he xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together, love, peace, and harmony, love, peace, and harmony. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Always sets the beautiful energy field. So thank you. Welcome also to Judy Parker. Aloha, welcome to Jennifer Crest Smith and Johnny Mambod. Anybody else whose names I may have missed, welcome. Thank you for coming today. <clears throat> so this morning in uh, checking in, I said, dear heaven, you know, what should I talk about today on the live stream? And I heard Shen Qi Jing. Uh, Shen Qi and Jing is Mandarin Chinese words that have a direct translation. Shen can be loosely, but directly translated to soul, uh, spirit. Qi, you everyone's heard of, if you stop and think about it, Qi translates to energy. Jing means matter. Now, one of the things about the Mandarin Chinese language is one word can have quite a few meanings. And the, the way you uh, vocalize it, the tonality of it, can change the meaning. And even if you have the correct tonality, that meaning itself can have multiple possibilities depending on the words around it. <clears throat> so in this case, Xian Qi and Jing stands for soul energy and matter but with shen it has a deeper layers shen is soul heart and mind now i'm going to show you some graphics in a little while but i wanted to kind of 
back up a little bit and put some roundedness to what you're about to understand today so that you can apply it on a much deeper and higher level. Uh, in the wisdom that Master Shah has, has shared with humanity, everyone and everything has a soul. You have a soul. I have a soul. Our animals have souls. <coughs> plants have souls. And the TV screen you're watching me through or the cell phone you're watching me through has a soul. The glass panel that makes it up has a soul. The chair you're sitting in has a soul. Oh my God, that just sounds a little crazy, some people might think. You've heard me talk about this before, but if you're a first timer, everything is made up of the source creator's energy and matter. Therefore, everything has aspect or consciousness of original source creator. Therefore, everything has source creator spirit, source creator soul. So that should uh, shift your perspective a bit. Now, we take it one step further. Everything has Shen, Qi, and Jing, soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. So your heart has a soul. Did you know that your heart has a heart and a mind? Your heart has a mind. My heart has a heart and a mind? Yes. And it has energy and matter. Your brain has a soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. Your feet have soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. It can get a little convoluted there if we're not careful. So how do we keep this in a very simple way? And simplistic understanding what is soul what is heart what is mind what is energy and what is matter <clears throat> soul is spirit original consciousness of original source heart heart is the the essence of that heart of the original soul original source creator and has been said in virtually every writing throughout humanity is love Love is creator, creator is love, one and the same. The highest energies are of source creator. So the heart carries the message of the highest love. The heart then precedes the mind. The mind is the deliverer of that message to the energy. It's the director. It directs which direction the energy goes. It tells it, go here, go there, do this, don't do that. The energy then adjusts the matter. I'll give you a visuals in just a minute, but I'm staying with an understanding that everything has soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. Now, for a lot of us, that can be very interesting to understand. So I'll show you something here. Let me uh, position myself to do this. Give me a second. Okay. And so now we have the one sentence secret. Heal the soul first, and the mind and body follows. We look at the next page here, and we see soul equals soul, heart, mind. Qi equals energy, and Jing equals matter. Well, we know that soul is the message. Soul is carrying a message. What is that message? Well, the original message is the message of love. The message that came from the source creator. Shen is soul. Soul comes from source creator. Therefore, your soul carries the original message of the highest, purest love. So soul is the carrier of message. But what happens, what happens when your soul separates from its original message? When we move away from our source creator, we move into the yin yang world, the world of up, down, hot, cold, right, wrong, the world of judgment and criticism, the world of making mistakes, the world of harming others through thoughts, words, or actions. And that creates separation between us and creator, the source, the source that carries the highest love-based frequency. So we are literally a representation of source that has separated from source. And in that Shen, Qi, and Jing, I'll go back to my image now. In that Shen, Qi, and Jing, our soul is carrying the message at all levels of our soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. What message is it carrying? It's carrying the message of our good and positive service, and it's carrying the message of our unpleasant negative service. What does that mean, good service, bad service? 
That means the harm that we've offered to others and the good that we've offered to others. <clears throat> the good and pleasant thoughts, the smiles, the courteous, compassionate efforts we've made, and the judgments and the criticisms and the harmful words, the harmful actions, all of these are recorded at the level of soul. Soul then is the carrier of message. What is soul? Soul is your shen. Soul leads the heart. Heart leads the mind. Mind then leads the energy. Energy then leads the matter. So I'll come back to this in a moment. <clears throat> soul is the carrier of message. What message is it carrying? Our good service and our not so good service. That's the message that it's carrying. When we focus on, when we focus on doing good things for others, helping others be happier and healthier, what is the message at the level of soul? The soul leads the heart. The heart leads the mind to do more happier and healthier benefits. That then positively affects our energy, which positively affects our matter. What is our matter? Our matter is our organs, our system, our blood. The matter is our finances. Chi leads the finances. Chi is the energy. What is our energy? What is our thought? Is our thought of prosperity and benefiting others in their prosperity, that energy then leads the matter of finances to us. So soul, heart, mind, energy, matter is in everything, our money, our relationships, our everything. If we have pleasant and unpleasant services in the area of relationships, does the relationship have Shen, Qi, and Jing? <clears throat> yes, the relationship has a soul. What? A relationship has a soul? Yes, it does. Because whether you believe in more than one lifetime or not, you and the spouse or you and the one you have a relationship with, you are individuals. But in between you, you have a collective agreement. You may be unpleasant to them. They may be unpleasant to you. That's creating an energy ball, if you will. That's creating a soul. It's creating something that, especially if you live more than one life, has a life of its own. It could have literally brought you together. And it could be the source of some of your arguments. The relationship has a soul. It has a heart. It has a mind, which then affects the energy and the matter of the relationship. Master Shah's one sentence secret is what? Heal the soul first and the mind and the body will follow. That is the one sentence secret, right? When you heal the soul first, the mind and the body will follow. I'll put up the slide again. So what is the order of things? Soul heart, mind, energy, matter. Heal the soul first and everything below it has to follow. The soul leads the heart. The heart directs the mind, tells the mind what to do. The mind then tells the energy where to go throughout the body or the mind directs the energy of our finances or the mind directs the energy of our relationships. The heart should be directing the mind. But for many people in humanity, the mind is directing a lot of things and it creates problems. <clears throat> when we heal things at the level of soul first, then that which is beneath it, the heart, the mind, the energy, and the matter must follow. So what causes the soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter to step out of balance? There is something out there in certain teachings called karma. In other teachings, it's called deeds or de. What has been done unto others returns into ourself. The law of cause and effect. All of these are the same things. Good services, bad services. Good karma, bad karma. Same result, different verbiage. When we do good things in this life, some of us still have difficulty. We help others, we give the shirt off our back, we think about others, this life is still difficult for us. Why? Because in previous times, we or our ancestors created negative messages that our soul is carrying with it. The soul is the carrier of the message of our life. What do you think the Akashic record is? It's the record of our lives and is carried on your soul. So 
when you deal with things at the level of soul, the Shen, Qi, and Jing energy and matter must adjust. So when we work with the level of soul, and when we clear blockages at the level of soul, the heart then adjusts. How come we have so much difficulty in relationship? Very simple. The relationship itself has debt. Relationship itself has a message to offer. If you enter a relationship and everything's, oh, lovey dovey, it's my soulmate, and blah, blah, blah. And three years into it, it's like, I hate this person. Why? Karma, the relationship itself, is the carrier of a message. That message is in many cases being misunderstood. It's not being honored and, 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 and respected, and it's not being worked with so that healing can be brought to that relationship. The relationship message is the Shen. Uh, the heart of that message could be, in a previous time, this person who is now lying to you, cheating on you, in a previous time, you lied and cheated on them. That's a simple example. Could be in a previous time, this person talked down to you, and now they're not interested in you because you're talking down to them. Every relationship carries these kinds of messages. We find ourselves in it, and we, we point the finger at the other person, but the message is, do forgiveness. The message is, realize this is not accidental that you two came together and you thought it was all perfect and lovey-dovey and then it went south for the winter. That's not accidental. The relationship soul is trying to offer you wisdom. And when we work with that wisdom, we can adjust our heart. We adjust our heart by doing forgiveness practices. Okay, Forgiveness practices, I forgive you. Please forgive me. I recognize that uh, when we enter this relationship, you had no desire to hurt me. We've had miscommunications. I recognize that it's very possible I have made miscommunication and you have said unpleasant things. And in previous times, we may have switched roles. I may have been just as unpleasant as you're being towards me. It doesn't mean we have to stay in this forever, but I also don't want to keep going around the rat wheel. Let us adjust our heart. Let us adjust the soul of the relationship, the message that it's carrying, adjust our heart by bringing forgiveness into the equation. Truly, deeply forgive. Let go. What good is it when you're behind the prison bars, rattling the cage, pointing the finger at that person outside the cage saying, they did this to me, blah, blah, blah. Does it serve any purpose? Has it helped you to move on in your relationships? When we deal with things at the level of soul, we're acknowledging the origination of the problem. The relationship has it. What about finances? Finances, you have a relationship with your finances, don't you? How about, how is your heart towards your finances? Well, uh, are you always complaining about money? What do you think the message of your heart is at that point in time? Your heart's message is complain, anger, angst, blame. What kind of delivery will your heart give to your mind? It will deliver a negative message to your mind. Your mind will then deliver a negative message to the energy, and the energy <clears throat> of uh, money will not be very good for you. It will create less money, which is the matter. So at the soul level, there could be some financial blockages. At the soul level, there could be messages at the level of your soul <clears throat> where your Shen is carrying the message of some unpleasant services to others in the area of finances. And those messages are creating problems for you. And that keeps your heart in a place of anger and angst and frustration. Recognize the problem is at the level of soul. Ask forgiveness for this in any lifetime that you or your ancestors have made very unpleasant choices harmed people's finances, took their business from them. Maybe you were a boss and you fired people. Maybe you cut a lot of corners and people were harmed accordingly. Maybe you were very greedy. Maybe your ancestors were greedy. And accordingly, other people's finances were harmed. Therefore, that negative service message carries forward and impacts your soul, which then impacts your heart. Ask forgiveness. Offer forgiveness. <clears throat> this then adjusts your heart. You can then tell your mind, let us continue to serve others. Let us continue to think positively. Let us recognize that we need to do more forgiveness. Your heart then tells your mind positive messages. Your mind then creates positive energies manifesting into your future. 
the matter of additional financial blessings. So it doesn't really matter. When I tell you, Master Shah's wisdom, <coughs> excuse me, that everything is made up of Shen, Qi, and Jing, soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter, you can start to see that now. You can see that in a relationship. You can see that in finances. And it also has to do directly with our health. You think it's accidental that you have lifelong back pain or liver cancer or breast cancer? You think any of this is accidental? The law of cause and effect, the law of universal law of universal service, these are universal laws. They're not avoidable. Just because we're ignorant of it doesn't make it avoidable. When we open our heart, we can adjust the blockages that impact us at the level of soul. We can enhance the positives that are blessing us at the level of soul. When we open our heart, we can work with consciousness, forgiveness. We can work with higher wisdoms, apply them directly in our lives. This then adjusts our heart's frequency. It directs the mind to think positively, to act positively, to say and think positive things, which then directs our energy and matter. All of this occurs with health as well. No difference. <clears throat> Take a moment and check any of the comments that might be coming through. So welcome also to um, Jasmine. Welcome Shelly. Welcome Susan Birchmore. Welcome Div Jot. Welcome Mary. Uh, and welcome Marcus. Anybody else whose name I might have missed. Thank you. Welcome and thank you for sharing hitting your share button. Let me clear my throat. Give me a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So I hope this wisdom is assisting you in a deeper understanding. You know, I can talk all day long about forgiveness practice and, and love, peace, and harmony and good karma and bad karma. But if you start to understand the nature and the direction of how this works, it can significantly benefit you. Now I'm going to go to a deeper layer of this. So by now you understand that the soul, your soul, is the carrier of messages. That you can have a relationship with your finances, a relationship with individuals. You can have a relationship with yourself. <clears throat> and all of these can have direct associations to the good and positive things you've done and the not so positive things you've done. Now, Let's look at how this works with health. In health, what, what typically happens is you have a health issue. So what do you go do? You go see the doctor. Excellent. I really appreciate doctors. I have had many accidents in my life. And if it wasn't for doctors, I would be definitely having some significant, significant issues. Doctors are awesome. Doctors are taught to deal with things at the level of Jing. <clears throat> what is Jing? Jing is matter. Western medicine deals with things at the level of matter. They adjust level of matter. So, for example, you go to the doctor and they say, okay, there is a biochemical imbalance here. The viruses or the bacteria is causing this biochemical imbalance. And we're going to give you this pharmaceutical, which will adjust your biochemical imbalance. Uh, okay, you have the condition of depression. <clears throat> We've looked at everything under a microscope and we see that this is a biochemical imbalance. And we're going to give you a, a pharmaceutical to adjust that biochemical imbalance. Uh, okay, we see that you have cancer. This is physical in your body. Your matter has been thwarted. You have had happy cells become unhappy cells and they are, are making other cells unhappy. So we're gonna cut it out entirely and we're gonna hope that all those unhappy cells continue to stop growing and stop making other cells unhappy. They deal with everything at the level of matter. <clears throat> so the question becomes, does that adjust your energy? Does that adjust your mind? When they cut a cancer out of your body, does that affect your energy? Does that affect your mind? Does that affect your heart? Does that affect your soul? Maybe nominally, you know, it might make you feel a little more positive because it's out now and you don't have to think about it as much. You probably, if you talk to people with cancer though, they'll tell you they still worry a lot and then keep a vigilant control of things. Does it adjust your mind? It probably does in the exact same way. <clears throat> does it adjust your heart? Probably not. 
you probably still have a lot of fear and a lot of apprehension. Does it adjust your soul? No, absolutely not. Because at the level of soul, the problem is still there. So this is how Western medicine addresses things. They're at the bottom of the totem pole in terms of resolving the source of the problem. Remember, the source of the problem is at the level of soul. Soul lives forever. <clears throat> soul is above everything. You originated from source creator. Source creator is original soul. You are a spark of original soul. That is first and foremost. You are a soul having a physical experience, not the other way around. So when you understand the nature of Shen, Qi, and Jing, you can also understand the nature of how to resolve all of the problems in your life. You can start to deal with things at the level, at the top, not at the bottom. You have a health issue, go see your doctor, great. But it's not gonna resolve the originating issue, cause and effect. The law of universal service states if you do unpleasant things to others, you get a little lesson. If you do more unpleasant things, you get a bigger lesson. If you or your ancestors have done significant unpleasant things, you could have huge lessons. Lessons come in many forms, including health issues. <clears throat> so if we just cut it out, it will not solve the problem. We have to address it at the top and work from the top down. So then we look at how does Eastern medicine look at it? How does Eastern medicine deal with it? Eastern medicine is chi oriented, energy oriented. There are hospitals in China <clears throat> and probably in other locations where you literally could go in and have, um, have a uh, uh, coach teach you Tai Chi and Qigong. And because you have learned Tai Chi and Qigong, you could heal yourself. There are quite a few hospitals that do nothing but Tai Chi and Qigong. They don't incorporate anything else. And yet people walk out of there healed from major, major diseases. Wow, how is that possible? Because when they're doing their Tai Chi and Qigong, they are adjusting the matter. The matter is the reflection of the health issue, the cancer, the pain, the suffering. Matter is the physical reflection of the health issue. Qi leads it. What led the Qi? The mind. So when you're doing Tai Chi and Qigong, is your mind calm? Are you channeling universal energy? Are you channeling positive thinking? So the mind is involved with the Qi. A good Qigong or Tai Chi master also involves the heart. They might teach aspects of forgiveness. It depends on the Tai Chi or Qigong masters. <clears throat> they might teach aspects of forgiveness. Uh, some of the better ones do teach aspects of forgiveness. So those Tai Chi and Qigong practitioners could teach heart adjustment, mind adjustment, physical energy movements, which then adjusts the matter. So there are a great deal of success stories associated with Qi practices, Eastern medicine practices. And this also includes acupuncture and herbs. You know, pain, pain in the physical body. You go to see an acupuncturist, they put a few needles in in some unusual spots in your body that you can't imagine has any association with your pain. And sure enough, the pain goes away. Why? Because they are causing the energy and the matter to come into relative balance. And Master Shah's wisdom in the Soul Mind Body Medicine book, which came out about 2005, I believe, <clears throat> um, he wrote on Master Guo's theory, which was the energy and matter theory that energy and matter vibrates. And when it's in relative balance, that chi and matter, chi converts to matter, matter converts back to energy at the cellular level. Even scientists, when they stick uh, uh, space underneath the microscope, they can see uh, uh, life, life what, do you, what would you say, energy and matter basically blipping into and out of existence underneath the microscope. They can't explain it, but they can see it. And that's what's happening at the cellular level. Our energy and matter is in, in or out of relative balance. If your matter is inflamed, which is about 90% of humanity, pain, uh, cysts, tumors, right? Um, tendonitis, whatever it might be, that's inflammation, sinusitis. All of this is inflammation. What does that mean? That means that there's not enough energy running in between and that the matter is too expansive. So when you do Tai Chi, what happens? You're bringing in more Chi, more energy, 
and then the energy and matter come into balance, 50-50. Therefore, acupuncture works. Tai Chi works. Qigong works. It's simple when you look at it from the perspective of Shen, Qi, and Jing. Soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. <clears throat> so when we look at this from the overall view, we see that Shen, Qi, and Jing represents the highest wisdom of how to bring alignment to our body. It's called soul, mind, body alignment. Soul, mind, body alignment is exceedingly important for every aspect of our life. Every aspect of our life is impacted by Shen, Qi, and Jing. Soul, mind, body, energy alignment is how do we get from where we're at to where we want to be. So you can uh, attend the class that's coming up at the uh, center here in Honolulu, November 9 through 11. It's Soul, Mind, Body, Energy, Alignment. And uh, Kristen will drop some links in. But the key here is understanding what is the root causes. The root cause is our positive and negative service. Then we adjust the energy and the matter, or we adjust things at the soul, heart, mind level. If you try to adjust it at the matter level, it has very little upward momentum, hardly, barely adjusts the energy. If you adjust it at the energy level, you get some mind and heart adjustment. You'll definitely get a lot of matter shifting, but it doesn't affect the soul at all. When you apply the wisdom that Master Shah has brought to us and heal things at the level of soul first, then the mind and body follows. So what's a good example of that? A great example of that is when we recognize the wisdom in Master Shah's books. What has he brought in his books? He has bought transmissions. He has placed calligraphies in his books, Tao source calligraphies in his books. What does his Tao source calligraphies do? They are the carrier of a message. What is it? What is what is the first first thing that was taught you? Everything has a soul. Does a calligraphy have a soul? Well, of course it does. If a relationship has a soul, a calligraphy has a soul, a book has a soul, everything that carries energy and matter, which is everything, has a soul. Therefore, a calligraphy has a soul. Everything carries a message. Everything, everything, everything. A tree carries a message. A monkey carries a message. This card carries a message. Everything, everything, everything carries a message. The message can be a very high frequency. The message can be a very low frequency. The message can be something that benefits us at the matter level, or it can be something that benefits us at the soul level. The reason people have not grasped the value of the Tao source calligraphies that Master Shah has placed in his books is because they do not comprehend the nature of soul the nature of message. They do not understand that when they align their soul, heart, mind, and body by raising the frequencies to a higher message, that they are in essence healing their soul, then their heart, then their mind, then their energy, and then their body. Since we've just discovered to this example that your finances has a soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter, wouldn't you want to adjust that to make things better for yourself? What about your relationships? You know now that it has a soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. If you could adjust it by using higher frequencies, wouldn't that be something you would spend a few minutes on? I think so. So it boils down to comprehending that everything has Shen Qi Jing. Everything has soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. By applying this wisdom, we can apply things like this calligraphy card. So <clears throat> these calligraphy cards carry extraordinary power. In Master Shah's book, Soul Healing Miracles, um, the New Da I book, he has, he has delivered these calligraphies, no cost except the cost of the book, and placed within them is very high Shen Qi Jing, very high soul, heart, mind, energy, matter frequencies. Now, some of you may or not be understanding of frequencies, but all you have to do is look at Dr. Emoto's work, you know, the Japanese man who took pictures of 
frozen crystals, and you can see that the frequency of love makes a beautiful crystal, and the frequency of hate makes a very ugly crystal. Since he was doing that with water crystals, we know now that the frequency of love carries a very high frequency, and the frequency of hate does not. We know that we are made up of 70 to 90 percent water, so if the word love and the energy and the frequency of love is creating a beautiful water crystal, what do you think it's going to do to our body? We now have validation that frequencies are associated with words. That's why you're asked, watch what you say, watch what you think, watch what you do. It creates imbalances in your soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. Again, a tie into all the wisdom we've known, putting it all together. So as you employ this wisdom of soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter to your health, or you employ it to those with the condition of cancer to serve them, or you employ this to adjust your finances, always apply the highest frequency. These calligraphies and Master Shah's books carry the highest frequencies known to humanity. They have literally been blessed to carry a very, very high frequency. Even Master Shah, if you, if you doubt that, Master Shah actually did something with Dr. Emoto. He was in, uh, Ma, uh, Master Shah was in Seattle. Uh, I believe that's correct. He was in Toronto or Seattle. And Dr. Emoto was in Japan. And literally over the phone, uh, Master Shah transmitted power to a glass of water. And then Dr. Emoto froze it, took pictures of it, validated that remote blessings can work. So he puts remote blessings into these calligraphies, very, very, very high frequencies. So one of the things you can do to elevate your Shen Qi Jing is that simple. What's another way you can elevate your Shen Qi Jing? Chanting the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony. Why do we chant that during this live stream? Why do I suggest you play it in your home and in your environment 24-7? Why should you, if you're a cancer patient, have it around you all the time? Why should you, if, you're, if you have any issues, chant to serve others? Because when we go back to the root causes, when you look here at the soul is the carrier message, when you chant love, peace, and harmony to serve others, you are creating good and positive service. This then adjusts the blockages at the level of soul, adding good virtue to your record in heaven. This then adjusts your heart because you're offering unconditional service, which then adjusts your mind. Your mind then directs your energy for healing to the condition. Your matter then adjusts accordingly. The wisdom applies to finances. It applies to everything. Why do I suggest? Why does Master Shah suggest chanting love, peace, and harmony to serve others? Is it just the song? It also carries a frequency. At a very high level, Master Shah did that test with Master with Dr. Emoto, and it was able to validate an extraordinarily beautiful crystal from one blessing. Much higher level blessings were put into the song of love, peace, and harmony. So every time you chant it, extraordinary frequencies are radiated out, adjusting the soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. What if you were to chant to serve others? What if you were to... Um, uh, call the souls. Let's say you had financial issues. Dear the souls of all those that are going through, let's say you're going through bankruptcy. Dear the souls of all those in humanity that are going through uh, bankruptcy issues. I call your soul. I chant to serve you. Whatever happens, happens. It's not up to me. I'm just chanting unconditionally. And you offer them unconditional service. What if it's a relationship blockage? Okay, you can't seem to get along with your spouse. Dear all the souls that are having difficulty getting along with their spouse. They're in a very precarious position in the relationship. I chant to serve you. What happens? Heaven records your good services. That, that recordation is like heaven flowers. It falls into your history of messages, thereby erasing negative Shen Qi Jing messages, adjusting your heart, adjusting your mind, adjusting the energy, and adjusting the matter of your relationship. When we go out of our way to be an unconditional servant to others, the results can be profound. When we teach our children to be the same way, we are actually impacting generations. 
if we can get humanity to move from selfishness to selflessness, even if it's just chanting the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony to serve others, we're going to have huge benefits. So when we take the time to offer service in this way, it can make an amazing, an amazing benefit. All right. We're going to offer a little service now, and we're going to use this time to serve others. We're going to use the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony. We'll chant for five minutes together. And I want you to choose one person or one area in your life uh, that you would like to bless. It could be a more than one person. So if you have a cancer, chant to serve others with that condition of cancer. You have uh, health issues with uh, cold and flu, chant to serve others with cold and flu. You have a uh, other kind of health issue, whatever it is, your agreement is to serve others, okay? And then what's happening is your Shen Shi Jing is being adjusted. The song of love, peace, and harmony has a soul, so we always connect with it. This is a wisdom that Master Shah brings to us. So repeat after me. Dear the soul of the mantra of love, peace, and harmony. I love you, honor you, appreciate you. Can you please offer a blessing as appropriate to all the souls with the condition of you state the condition that you want to chant for others for. I am very grateful. Thank you. We do a little forgiveness practice. Dear all souls in all time, please forgive me and my ancestors for creating any blockages in your life, especially for the condition of state the same condition. If I or my ancestors have brought any form of harm or suffering to you for this kind of condition, from my heart, I sincerely, sincerely apologize. Please forgive me. I forgive all souls that have brought this form of suffering to me in this or any time. Let us move forward in love, peace, and harmony. So this is a very simple uh, steps where you simply connect. You ask the song of love, peace, and harmony to serve others, and you connect with their souls. You do a simple forgiveness, which is opening your heart, clearing heart-related blockages, and then we chant to serve others. So let us do that together. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula,我爱我心儿灵,我爱转南雷,让灵,让,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,哈尔木,
Join hearts and souls together, love, peace, and harmony, love, peace, and harmony. Le la lu la li, le la lu la la li, le la lu la li lu la, le la li lu la, le la li lu la. Wo ai wo xian. Erling, wo ai zi man lei, rang li rong, er mu shi shang, shang ai ping on a xie, shang ai ping on a xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. One of the ways you can also increase your Shen Qi and Jing, clear blockages in your Shen Qi Jing, is to offer gratitude. How many souls came? Millions. How many souls served? Millions. Why? Because millions have been invited to chant along with us, love, peace, and harmony. We always offer our gratitude to these beautiful souls. Thank you, divine Tao Source. Thank you, all the beings of light who have come. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I offer you my gratitude for taking the time out of your day to spend with me. Please, if you enjoyed this, share this with others. Uh, we have an upcoming event here in Honolulu, Feb uh, excuse me, November 9 through 11. And if you look on the chats that Kristen has posted, she's posted the links. I will also post it in the box with my information above. And you can attend the Soul Mind Body Alignment Retreat and learn much, much deeper wisdom many many practices and practical application about how you can align all aspects of your life relationship finances health doesn't matter when you understand the nature of shen shi jing you can align your soul heart mind in such a huge benefit your body will be so grateful so i love you i thank you for coming and i will see you on thursday 9 a.m that's three hours earlier than when we started today and i look forward to serving you then thank you everybody Bye-bye.